So welcome back. Welcome back to our Proverbs series. You probably realize it's the Proverbs series with this monster image behind me. Love the image. Uh, I spoke about it a couple weeks ago. It's such a perfect image for Proverbs. So to kick us off today, I have three questions for you, and I just want to get your head thinking. Uh, so this is um, just real quick, three questions. Question number one, when you look back or when we look back on our lives, what is it that we tend to think about, focus on, and feel? Just think about that for a second. When you look back on your life, what is it that you tend to think about? In general, I think people are remember, they remember their hurts, their wounds, and the regrets in life, right? So I think sometimes we look back and, and, and those things are very real to us. And if we're not forgiving people, that unforgiveness kind of steals our today, right? Uh, if we look back and look at some of the uh, de decisions we made that maybe weren't the best, we kind of live today with regrets. So in general, I would ask you, what is it that you think about? What is it that you focus on? What is it that you feel about? your past. So the second question, somewhat similar, but instead of the past, we're looking to the future. So when you look into the future, what is it that you think about? What is it that you focus on? What is it that you feel about your future? Chances are, because it's pretty normal, because we don't know what's going to happen in the future, we tend to feel insecure. I mean, that's pretty normal, right? And so if we feel insecure, what tends to happen? Well, anxiety and stress and fear just kind of moves into our hearts a little bit. So we think of the future and it kind of takes our, 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 um, our, our breath away a little bit because we kind of get tense because we don't know what's going to happen. Question number three, what about today? What about looking in your current day right now? In general, what is it that you think about today? What is it that you focus on today? How will you feel about today? And the chances are, because this, again, can be pretty normal, people can be frozen. And they can be frozen because the regrets of yesterday, or maybe the hurts from you know, other people, mixed with maybe the fear of tomorrow, just kind of freezes us. And it's really hard to enjoy today because our minds are really uh, on, on the things that happened in the past or they're on the things we don't know what might happen in the future. We just kind of struggle to enjoy it. And as Sam said last week, it's hard to be where your feet are. It's hard to enjoy this moment, this day, with, your, uh, with, the, with the relationship to your, your, that you're in. And I want to read for you uh, what Jesus said in his very first sermon. We find this in Luke 4, uh, chapter, or verse 16. He said this, or at least it says this in Scripture. Jesus went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue as was his custom, he stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it, was, where it is written, The Spirit of God is on me, because he has anointed me to pro proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind. He set the pr oppressed free to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Jesus shows up and it's the most beautiful picture. He shows up and he announces God's favor. What does that mean, God's favor? It sounds like a spiritual term. It's kind of fuzzy. I want to explain what that means. It just simply means God through Jesus came to do things for us that we can't do. That's God's favor. Or we could say God's grace. Um, think about this. He came to forgive us of our past because of our sins and our regrets, and he wants us to be free from that, and that's a very good thing because we struggle to kind of deal with those things, right? Like, you can't take care of sin. I can't take care of sin. We need God to do things for us. Um, he came to anoint us with the Holy Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, place the Holy Spirit inside us to give us courage so that we can face tomorrow. We can overcome fear and anxiety, and that's good because we struggle to really deal with fear and anxiety, right? And God came to invite us into a personal relationship with Him, to walk with Him every day, so we can relax and enjoy every moment of every day today, and that's good because we struggle to really enjoy today. 
And I want you to think about this. This is, I, I really want you to think about this. Um, all the things that I'm talking about, all the emotions that I'm addressing, they're found in our hearts, right? Sin and regrets, that's in our hearts. Anxiety and fear, that, that's in our hearts. Peace, that's in our hearts. And only God can come and transform our hearts. We can't do it. We can't do heart stuff. And that's why one of the most important things we can do in our lives is pay attention to what's going on in our hearts. And actually, that's what it means to be spiritual. That's what being spiritual means. When I focus on the condition of my heart, I'm being spiritual. And that's what Jesus was explaining in Luke 4. Because we can't fix the heart stuff. He came. He came to do the things for us that we cannot do. Again, we call this God's favor. We call it God's grace. And before we move on, I just want to ask you a few questions. Again, I'm trying to get your heart or your, your mind thinking. Ready? What is going on in your heart right now? As you're watching this, what's going on in your heart? Are you angry? Are you stressed? Are you filled with anxiety? Are you feeling control? Um, are you hurt all the time? Do you feel depressed? Are you checked out? Like, what is happening in your heart? Actually, when's the last time you thought about that? When's the last time you've slowed down to kind of process through, this is how I'm feeling in my heart? When's the last time you thought through the choices you're making? And do you think there's anything more important in your life than dealing with the things of your heart? Listen, as important as it is to focus on your heart and understanding what's going on in your heart, many people don't want to deal with the things of their heart. Another way to put it is they don't want to deal with spiritual things. Remember we said that's what it means to be spiritual. You deal with the things of the heart. And a lot of people, even though it's really important, a lot of people, that's the last thing they want to deal with, right? Instead of dealing with it, we would, rather to, we would rather ignore the condition of our hearts and we would rather just push through in life. And what is the result of ignoring your true heart condition and pushing through in life? Well, if your chances are we aren't enjoying what only God can do for us. If I'm going to ignore my heart and I'm just going to keep pushing through life, I'm not enjoying what only God can do for me. I'm not enjoying the forgiveness of the things of my past. I'm not enjoying a relationship with Jesus so I can experience the peace today. I'm not enjoying the power of the Holy Spirit that gives me courage to face tomorrow. So how do we push through and, you know, how do we ignore our heart and how do we push through? Well, um, we can become busy. We can become really, really busy and we can just say to ourselves and to our friends, I just don't have time for God that just simply means we wake up, the feet hit the floor, and we just go off on our day. Another way we can kind of just kind of charge through life is we can care more about how we appear to people um, instead of really caring about our true heart condition. That just means we kind of slap on this mask and we pretend to everybody that things are great while at the same time things aren't great. We feel very defeated. Another common response is when unhealthy emotions kind of pop up, um, man, we do all kinds of stuff. We can try to stuff them, you know. Um, we can, when those negative emotions hit, sometimes we go to our private addictions and, uh, you know, those things we don't want anybody to know just to find relief. Um, some people, um, as heartbreaking as it is, they can just give in. They can give in to the negative emotions. Uh, they do the least possible. They view themselves as victims and they conclude, it's just who I am. Even though Jesus, you know, died for me on the cross and, and resurrected, was resurrected by the, the power of the Holy Spirit, um, it worked for him, it works for everybody else, but I'm a victim, it doesn't work for me. Now, just a quick time out. Um, I want you to think about church. I want you to think about the challenge we have at church, right? So what is the message at church? The message from church is God came to share his favor, his grace, to do things for you that you can't do. What an incredible message, right? God came to deal with the spiritual things of your heart. Church deals with what matters most, our heart condition, and the challenge churches have in general is people don't want to deal 
with a heart condition. Listen, I'm, I'm trying to be very honest here. There's a reason people don't want to go to church, and it's not always the reason that they tell you. Uh, many times when you come to church, you have to deal with things that matter, and if you don't want to deal with things that matter, then let's sleep in, go golf, or go to Walmart. Like, there's just so many other things you could be doing. That way you don't have to deal with the things of the heart. So let's read Proverbs. We're in a Proverbs series. Let's jump into Proverbs. That was all uh, foundation for where we're going. Proverbs 10, 16 says, The labor of the righteous leads to life, the wages of the wicked to sin. Same verse, different translation. Good people are rewarded with life, but evil people are paid with punishment. Same verse, different translation. The wage of a good person is exuberant life, an evil person ends up with nothing but sin. What does this verse mean? What in the world? It says things like the labor of the righteous, the wage of the good person. It sounds like work. Well, here's what it means. What it means is a good person, a righteous person, is someone who surrenders their lives to Christ. They are paying attention to their heart condition. They spend time with God, and their reward over a life is energy and passion, this way of living that says, I'm exuberant from my heart. I didn't say everything's going to work out the way you want in life. I didn't say the promise is health, wealth, and comfort. I said the, the reward of paying attention to your heart and being connected to God is that you have energy and passion as you walk through the challenges of life. Remember, when we opened the Proverbs series a couple weeks ago, in week one, Sam said, wisdom isn't in just being intelligent or smart. It's, it's bigger than that. He explained that wisdom is knowledge and the capacity to live it out. And remember how Sam said, we get wisdom, it's through humility. And he shared this in Proverbs verse one, uh, chapter one, verse seven. How does a man become wise? The first step is to trust and reverence the Lord. Remember week two and week two, we said, hey, listen, in your life, at some point, you're going to have to decide what the foundation of your life is going to be. It's either going to be your culture, that would be people around you. It's either going to be you, what you think and how you feel, or it's going to be God. And this is what it says in Proverbs 4.18. The way the righteous is like the first gleam of dawn, which shines ever brighter until the full light of day. But the way of the wicked is total darkness. They have no idea what they are stumbling over. Listen, when we make God the foundation of our lives over our lifetime, our lives, are, the passion from our hearts becomes vibrant and it, we just kind of radiate through life. This is what Proverbs says. When you give your life to God, when He's the foundation over a long period of your life, things happen in your heart that you couldn't have happen any other way. And when we choose culture as the foundation or the people around us and what they think and feel, or when we look to ourselves, um, what we think or how we feel, Scripture says we're going to be stumbling through the dark and we're not going to understand why we're stumbling. Last week, Sam taught us the difference between an orderly life and a chaotic life. I loved his talk last week. I really encourage you to go back and listen to it. He used this verse out of Proverbs 3.1. My son, do not forget my teaching, but let your heart keep my commandments for length of days and years of life and peace they will add to you did you know that that's an amazing verse to read and understand and believe it's amazing did you know that when you give your life to god that he gives you like days and your life is longer and he gives you peace right and then sam closed with this very powerful point he said we must take inventory of our lives we have to be deliberate deliberate and be intentional Wisdom means we're living on purpose. Um, as we live life, we pay attention uh, to our heart and our choices. And as we live our lives, we surrender to God. And, and like he said, we live on purpose. I want to read for you Proverbs chapter 8, verse 34. Bless the man, bless the woman who listens to me. Awake, ready for me each morning, alert and responsive as I start my day's work. When you find me, you find life, real life, to say nothing of God's good pleasure. But if, you are, uh, but if you wrong me, you damage your very soul. When you reject me, you're flirting with death. Listen, people who surrender their lives to God, people who are working and paying attention to their heart condition, people who spend time with God, their spiritual reward is energy and passion 
And actually the verse uh, Sam gave us last week, it adds days to your life. It's incredible. Okay, so what I want to do in this point of the talk, I want to get practical because I think we're talking about verses and spiritual thing. And if you're listening, maybe you can get a little fuzzy and say, well, that's what the pastor's paid to say. It's kind of fuzzy. I'm not sure how that really, um, what it matters to me. He says things a lot like pay attention to your heart. I, I just don't get it. Why is that so important? Can't I just ignore this stuff and just charge through life isn't this just kind of church stuff right so i'm going to get really practical i'm going to go back and read this verse again it's in proverbs 10 16 the labor of the righteous leads to life the wages of the wicked to sin what does that mean practically the labor of the righteous what does that even mean well to do this uh, to explain it i'm going to walk you through two scenarios and i'm going to ask you two questions question number one when you grew up uh, as a little boy little girl when you grew up what is it that you wanted from your dad just think about that for a second as you were growing up as a little boy little girl what is it that you wanted from your dad now that you're older you're looking back you can think a little bit more clearly looking back you probably wanted your dad's love and support that simply means you wanted him to have a healthy heart, to be able to love you and support you and be in a good relationship with you. That's all you wanted. Looking back, that's what you wanted. Now, here's a reality. If your dad didn't have a healthy heart, or we could say he didn't have a healthy spirituality, if, if your dad didn't have a healthy heart, what happened in your life? Well, chances are you were wounded to some degree. And you have spent much of your life trying to heal from some of those wounds that you experienced when you were younger. And because of those wounds, as you're growing up into adulthood and you're living out life, you probably struggle to understand who you are. You probably struggle to understand how you relate to others. And you probably struggle to understand your place in this world. And the deeper the wound, the more real this is for you. And for some of you, you haven't been wounded much at all. Your, your dad had a healthy heart and it was great. And for many, uh, the, the, the wound's pretty deep. And this is a huge reality. Do you see, do you make the connection that your dad's heart condition, or we could say his spirituality, directly impacted your heart for years and years and years. Don't you wish, looking back, that your father understood Proverbs 10, 16 that says, the labor of the righteous leads to life, right? Here's what we know about how important a father's heart is. I'm going to share with you what we've discovered from surveys. Surveys reveal that if a child gives their life to Christ, the chances that in the entire family follows and gives their life to Christ is 3.5%. A child gives their life to Christ, there's a 3.5% that the rest of the family is going to give their lives to Christ. So let's, a uh, survey also reveals that if a mother gives her life to Christ, what do you think the percentage is that her family will follow and give their lives to Christ? Well, it's 17%. So if a child comes to Christ, it's 3.5%. If a mother comes to Christ, it is a 17% uh, chance. Let, let, let me give you a stat that might blow your mind. If a father gives his heart to Christ and becomes a disciple of Christ, becomes a Christian, what is the percent that the family's going to follow? 93%. There's a 93% chance that the entire family, to some degree, is going to follow after God. Listen, the father's heart matters. The labor of the righteous leads to life the wages of the wicked, does it, like it matters. If you're a dad right now, do you see, do you make the connection that your heart condition, your spirituality will impact your kids for years and years and years? If you're a parent, do you see that your heart condition, your spirituality, it's going to impact your children for years and years and years? And would you agree that your heart condition is in fact the most important thing that you could kind of be aware of, right? Second question to have you kind of think through this. In your marriage, what is it that you want from your spouse? What is it that you want from him? What is it you want from her? Well, you want to be close to them. You want them to believe in you and you want them to make you feel valuable. 
That just simply means you want them to have a healthy heart and be able to love and support you and be in a good relationship with you. And if your spouse is not right now walking in a relationship with God, doesn't have a God-touched heart, what's happening? Well, chances are you're kind of wounded in that. You're trying to bring your best and your spouse may not. Um, and, and you're kind of wounded in that. And you've spent much of your marriage trying to figure out why is this so hard and because of those wounds, you may struggle to know who you really are. Because of those wounds, it, it, might, it might be a struggle to help, uh, for you to relate to others well. And because of those wounds, it might be a struggle for you to understand how you relate into this, to this world. Do you see, do you make the connection that your spouse's heart condition, their spirituality, directly impacts your heart for years and years and years? Don't you wish they fully understand, understood Proverbs 10, 16 that says the labor of the righteous leads to life, right? Don't you wish that they made their heart condition a priority? If you're married, do you see that your heart condition directly impacts your spouse's heart condition for years and years and years? If you're single, it's really no different. If you're single, do you realize that your heart condition, the, um, the, 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 the condition of your heart, it impacts everyone around you and it can impact them for years and years. Would you agree that your heart condition is in fact one of the most important things that you could really be focusing on and dealing with? What is the greatest thing that you can do? Well, one of the greatest things you can do is work on your heart condition, or we would say your spiritual condition. Remember, what it means to be spiritual is I'm going to deal with my heart. What is the one thing people don't want to do? Well, the one thing that people find it a challenge to do is actually working on their heart. If we ignore our hearts, where does the damage show up? Well, damage shows up in our relationships. Our heart condition can impact hearts of those around us for years and years and years. It, don't you find it just this crazy irony that the most important thing that we could deal with is, in fact, the one thing we don't want to deal with, and we just kind of charge through life, and then years later we see the damage that maybe we, we have caused because we're not making our heart our highest priority. I want to read with you a proverb that really impacted Sam, really impacted me. I want to share it with you. It says this, when, a young, when I was a young man, I wanted to change the world. I found it was difficult to change the world, so I tried to change my nation. When I found I couldn't change the nation, I began to focus on my town. I couldn't change a town, and as an older man, I tried to, ch I tried to change my family. Now, as an old man, I realize the only thing I can change is myself, and suddenly I realize that if long ago I had changed myself, I could have made an impact on my family. My family and I could have made an impact on our town. Their impact could have changed the nation, and I could indeed have changed the world. I want to read for you this verse again, and I want to share some facts with you. Proverbs 10, 16, the labor of the righteous leads to life. And the hard work of being righteous, of being with God, surrendering your life to God, it leads to life. The wages of the wicked uh, to, to, to sin. First, I want you to understand your heart condition, um, your spirituality, it needs to be one of the highest priorities of your life. Why? Because it has huge implications. And you know this. This has been your experience. It has huge spiritual implications from your heart into the heart of everyone around you. Second, you'll be tempted, and you know this, you'll be tempted to ignore the condition of your heart and just keep pushing through life. And you're going to be tempted to care more about how you appear to others. You'll be tempted to believe, I just don't have time. I, we've got to raise the kids. I've got bills to pay. We've got soccer fields to go to. I just don't have time. You don't understand. I can ignore this stuff for now and we'll just deal with it later. You'll be tempted to ignore your heart condition to get things done. You've got to build the business. You've got to pay the bills. There's a lot of people to do and you've got to plan the vacation. Like, I don't have time. I've got to get things done. And you'll be tempted to stuff your junk, junk, you, you know, the, the stuff that kind of pops up that you don't want anybody to know, and you're going to be, you just want to push it away. No one saw that. No one saw that. It won't come back. If I just push it away, it'll never come back. Obviously, it, it just comes back worse, right? And wisdom will tell you, don't ignore your heart. 
because it has huge long-term implications. Third, the greatest challenge to your life is in other people. It's you. The greatest challenge in my life, it's really not other people. It's me. So I want to ask you these three questions, same questions I started with. I want to if, end with these three questions to have you think through the condition of your heart. Number one, when you look back on your life in general, what do you think about? What do you focus on? What do you feel? Is it hurts, wounds, um, regrets? What, you know, what, what, what is it? Um, what, what's going on in your heart today because of stuff that happened yesterday? Second question, when you look into the future in general, what is it you think about, focus on, and feel? Do you feel a sense of no control, leaving you feel insecure? And you can just, as I say it, you can just feel the stress, anxiety, and fear just kind of move in in your heart. Is today being consumed by your worry over tomorrow? What's going on in your heart when you think about tomorrow? Question number three, when you walk through your current day, what's it like? Are you able to be where your feet are? Are you able to enjoy the moment? Are you in, able to enjoy um, your friends, your spouse, your children, your parents? Like in that moment, are you able to enjoy the day? Your heart condition, hear me, it matters. Wisdom says work on your heart. I'm going to read this verse one more time when I'm tapping out. The labor of the righteous leads to sin. I'm sorry, the labor of the righteous leads to life. The wages of the wicked lead to sin. We'll see you next week.